Welcome back to The Breakfast. You are still watching our breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And it's time for our first hot topic. We shall be taking a look at Senate's approval of President Muhammadu Buhari's 22.7 trillion Naira Ways and Means Extra Budgetary Spending. And we have been joined by Mr. Biodo Shomi, a political affairs analyst here in Lagos. Good morning, Mr. Shomi. Good morning. All right. Well, not a few Nigerians are outraged by this last minute spending, and it has raised lots of questions. And one of them is the competence of Nigeria's Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, talking about Mrs. Zainab Ahmed, especially when compared uh, with her predecessors like Ms. Kemi Adoshio and Dr. Ngozi Okonjo Iwela. How would you describe Mrs. Zena? Would you say she knows her job or is she just being her master's servant at the detriment of Nigerians? Hello? Mr. Shomi? Looks like we've lost a bit of connection there. Hello. Okay. Uh, well, uh, we'll try and reconnect with him so that uh, we can have this discussion he's, in he's earnest. He's back, I think. Yeah. Hello, Mr. Shomi. Unmute yourself. We still we can't hear you. Uh, I don't know. I maybe can hear you. Okay. I can yeah. hear you loud. We can hear All you right. now. So, did you get to hear my questions before we had that disruption? Yes. All right. So yes. please go ahead and answer. So, is on the Senate approval um, of a credit line to the regime through its supplementary budget. Um, it's quite very embarrassing, to say the least, that even at this twilight um, uh, hour, we can still go on credit spread. Do not forget one thing. This is not even money that the country has. We are borrowing, and that is what we're doing. Uh, currently, we're talking about the figure of a combined states and federal, budget, uh, federal debts of about 77 trillion naira, which will be handed over to the incoming administration. Out of it, about 48 trillion naira is the federal government share of internal and external debt. So, what will be the basis of going on this kind of credit spray? It's not spending spray, credit spray, you know, at this dying hour. And um, again, uh, very embarrassing is also the role of this um, uh, this uh, the Senate, the National Assembly. You know, it's quite um, shocking that many of the senators could choose to approve that supplementary budget request uh, be made less than a month to the terminal date of this administration. Uh, for me, there is no other way to explain this other than um, we are behaving, you know, in a very reckless way, not minding what happens in future, not minding what happens to uh, the next administration and how they will manage the economy. We are already in trouble. Do we need to keep digging? When you are in a hole, you don't keep digging. You keep thinking of how to get out of it. So, uh, look. I have to be careful with the choice of my words, but I, I would say very embarrassing situation. Well, yes, the, 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 the Senate has no doubt been described as rubber stamp. Almost all Nigerians uh, having that narrative about the Ninth Assembly. But we, we're talking about the, the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, allowing this kind of, giving this kind of advice to the President at this point in time. 26 days, 25 days to go. And some of the other things that we have seen play out in the course of the eight years of this administration. So can you just tell us, um, having looked at the works of this finance minister, how would you rate her in terms of delivery and decisions? Mm. Um, well, I must first state clearly that the funding is expected to come from the credit line through means and means, which originally was designed, you know, for a credit line of one trillion naira, now which is already over twenty-three trillion naira. Now, in relation to the finance minister, in my view, she 
she is probably responsible for the state of things uh, we found ourselves in. Because she's responsible not only for the uh, physical policies, she is also responsible you know, for planning the national budget and presenting it not only to the Executive Council, to the Federal Executive Council, but also to the National Assembly. So when you find a minister who has embarked on a reckless, you know, uh, borrowing to fund the economy to the extent that we have an unprecedented debt in the history of our country, there's nothing else to say, complimentary to, uh, to that minister, other than to say that um, it's quite unfortunate that we have such a person as a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria placed in charge of our finance. Um, a, a lot of things went wrong with uh, the Buhari's administration. There were a lot of things that were also right, but a lot of things went wrong, and particularly the economy has grown, you know, haywire. Uh, so also, including the leadership of the economy, both at the central bank and the Ministry of Finance, they've gone haywire. And um, there is nothing complimentary that can be said in my view about their performance, given the impact on average Nigerian and on our country in general. Well, as we're sharing the blame cake, as it were, um, how would you describe the actions of the National Assembly? Because they recently approved uh, money uh, that uh, we heard of. They said this was money that had been spent already without uh, the National Assembly giving it any legal backing. So the presidency collected this money spent arbitrarily and then came back to the National Assembly for approval after it has been spent. And they did approve it. So wh what would you describe the National Assembly as? Well, uh, the approval is retroactive. Like I tried to point out earlier, the money was pulled from Central Bank through the ways and means. Uh, yeah, okay, just before, I, just to add to that as you're answering, the ways and means, the percentage for the ways and means was supposed to be about 5%, 5 I think. Now, from experts' analysis, they have gone more than 2,000%, taking from the ways and means. And the uh, National Assembly keeps approving and then complaining later that the borrowing is too much. So, in your answer, add that to the, to the free. The, the, the ways and means we are supposed to borrow one trillion naira through ways and means. Now we've gone over to twenty something trillion, over twenty two, almost twenty three trillion naira uh, through ways and means. And then we now came back for the proactive approval. Do you spend a money not approved in a budget? If a budget has not been approved, you cannot spend it. But they have spent the money. They came back. As for the approval, and the Senate, in its wisdom, decided to approve it. Um, <clears throat> well, I am inclined to agree with some people who felt that the current Senate is more or less a rubber stamp of the executive. We cannot have a balanced democracy if this is what will happen. These are people who are supposed to pull. You know, ask questions, you know, pull the president up to say, look, you cannot do this. Even if we're going to have to approve it, we still have to censure it. There's nothing of such. Rather, they got that and then they approve it. I am not suggesting any uh, underhand tactics uh, used uh, to secure that. But the fact is, when you look at the record of this Senate, under Ahmed Lawan, right from day one, um, is that of a very pliant uh, Senate, uh, which has been doing the bidding of the executives without bothering about their own functions of legislative oversight over the activities and uh, functions of the executives. All right, well, that brings us to questions about how the 10th Assembly should be formed, I mean, in terms of leadership. And if this 9th Assembly have displayed this kind of in court impunity, approving what should have not been approved, um, what might we expect of the 10th Assembly? Um, what kind of leadership are you hoping to see play out, come uh, formed in the upcoming 10th Assembly? To see to it that these kind of approvals that should not have been given is not made a standard in our economy. 
yeah, to, to be honest with you, I thought whether we're capable of, of producing a, a Senate that will be so planned like this. When you look at <coughs> the composition of the uh, next Senate, it's going to be totally different. You have more parties represented. We have Labour Party, YPP, Young People's Party, ADC, uh, PDP, APC. So you have so many opposition parties represented in that Senate. So I doubt whether we will be able to produce the same planned um, Senate uh, like this one. What we are likely going to see is that even within the APC, there are people who will be interested um, in what the government is planning to do or what they are doing. The reason is this. Many tough decisions will be taken and many controversial decisions will be taken by the next administration in order to rescue our country. So this will generate intense debate, not only within the APC, it will excite the opposition, it will excite the populace because of you know, the biting effects, the excruciating pains of the removal of um, fuel subsidy. So therefore, you are likely going to see a more vibrant, more resistant um, Senate rather than a planned Senate um, in the next term administration. It does not matter how the leadership will emerge this time. What would happen is the impact of those controversial, those essential policies that will be taken, uh, the impact of it on the populace, on everybody, will generate an anxiety at so many debates in a way that the Senate will not be as pliant as the one we have currently. Uh, but we, the, fear, the fear is that even now that the uh, Senate leadership or the National Assembly leadership has not been uh, uh, formed as it is, uh, there is this lobbying of the President-elect to anoint candidates for leadership positions in the National Assembly. Do you see those people if eventually they get this position as people who can talk for themselves? Well, we've even seen um, a particular candidate going to lobby the current president, you know, to assist him in that process, to endorse. Um, it doesn't matter whatever they choose to do, whichever way they choose uh, to, uh, to go for, you know, to, to achieve their goal. Um, at the end of the day, the reality will dawn on everybody in the sense that many tough decisions will be taken. And because of that, that will excite a lot. Look, we are looking at even a time when uh, there will be organized labor season of strikes and all that will come in. So uh, the idea of people thinking we'll have a planned Senate in the next um, administration, it's uh, for me, is not real. It's not likely going to happen. What we're likely going to happen is many important policies and decisions that will be taken by the next administration will generate a lot of excitement, will generate a lot of debate about whether it is right, appropriate, or the effects of it, or what government needs to do, you know, to ameliorate the impact on the populace. So therefore, no matter who emerges the Senate president, it is most unlikely that we'll have a, a, a more pliant or a, an equally pliant Senate, uh, Senate like uh, the present in my view. Well, what we see now is that um, we need to send the right people to the, to the National Assembly because our debates outside the National Assembly uh, from, from a for a long time now have not really mattered that much. And when you find front runners in this Senate leadership or this uh, National Assembly leadership campaigning with Something like, I have four wives and 28 <laughs> children. That means I'm going to do well. It, it gives you worry as a Nigerian. How can you say because you have four wives and 28 children, you can be a good uh, leader in the National Assembly? If you use that as something that shows how much of wisdom that you have, it will worry some of us. Does it mean people with one wife will not be able to do that? And you, because you have married four, that is a credential that we should be applauding. So it gives us worry, the, the constitution of the National Assembly in the first place, and if they're going to take good decisions. And if they don't take good decisions, these debates that you're talking about, if it's coming from the people, how much will it matter? Because it almost always ends on the floor of the House. What decision they take, whatever else everybody says, does not matter. 
So does it not worry you? Yes, um, the quality of the people elected to the National Assembly at times, and including currently uh, the, the, the incoming one, um, is quite very worrisome. Uh, we have situations where people with um, questionable uh, uh, disposition to public good, people with um, questionable characters, and uh, you know, getting elected into the Senate. Once they're elected, there's nothing you can do. We now have people interested in uh, in asking questions um, about uh, their loyalty to, to their constituents. Well, whatever. to start with, why will they be loyal to their constituents? There is a particular Nigerian who is a sitting member of FASO Preps, who also contested facing criminal in interrogation and also getting re-elected re again. You know, these are the kind of characters we have in the Senate. So what when you have problems or issues with the criminal justice system, don't blame the executives for exploiting it, you know, to, to, to ensure that their bids are done, you know, by those elected, which at times some of the blame should be shared, you know, by the populace, because we, we are aware of the some of those characters, and then we end up electing them one way or the other, and only to end up lamenting that... Um, they are not doing what they are elected to do. So if you have to look at the problem properly, part of the problem is also, you know, we, the populace, uh, we leave the credible candidates at times and just to jump on the bandwagon of um, the bigger political parties. Um, so this is part of the problem. All but right, so whatever happens at the end of the day, it's Nigerians that matters. And once Nigerians are excited on any government policies, whether the Senate, Senate likes it or not, they will have to take up on it and um, appropriately address it. Well, leadership involves political calculations, and we have seen leaders come and go. And as you have said, the executive will jump into any opportunity it has. Uh, so let compare for us, if you can, um, uh, Bukola Saraki's uh, leadership and Ahmed Lawan's leadership, just to... Give us some sort of excitement, honestly, if you will, over this matter. Compare uh, these two leaders honestly, in their times. Yes, honestly speaking, there's no basis for comparison. The last time we have a vibrant setting, it was when Bukola Saraki uh, was uh, the leader of the Senate. That does not make the Senate perfect uh, under his leadership. There were mistakes, there were some things uh, that they could have done better. But uh, there should be no basis for comparison with Lawan. Ahmed Lawan is just completely very pliant um, Senate. And uh, in fact, to be honest with you, um, that uh, leadership should also be blamed uh, like the executive for the current state of things, either on security issues or for the economic um, um, problem, challenges that we're facing currently. So there should be no business at all. You know, the Bukola Saraki. Uh, provided a very good platform, you know, to, 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 to carry out legislative oversight. And they did that excellently compared to the present um, Senate leadership who have chosen to abandon um, their own responsibility to be. Okay, uh, Mr. Shomi, uh, that's the much we can take on this segment of the program. would like to say thank you to you for your thoughts and insights into these uh, issues that we raised. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. Okay, we've been talking with Mr. Biodun Shomi, political affairs analyst here in Lagos State. We'll take a short break and when we return, we will be talking with someone else who will tell us about SPA and the health benefits for us, especially in Lagos. Stay with us.